These are devotions for people at a social distance. I've been away, away for a week of continuing education, so in some ways I'm still uh, at least devotionally catching up to the news uh, and what's been going on in our world over the last week. And I wanted to reflect a little bit about a very deeply disturbing event that took place uh, about a week ago, uh, a horrible uh, mass shooting event that took place in Buffalo and so much, I mean, just another mass shooting event to, to one extent, and yet there are so many things about this that are deeply, deeply disturbing to me. Uh, the idea that, that this man, a white man, would travel for a couple hundred kilometers, I think it was, to go and find a bunch of black people where they live and where they shop in order to kill as many of them as he possibly could. Oh, that's deeply disturbing. Uh, the, the, uh, that he would post and that would be spread around this manifesto that this was about uh, the superiority of the white race and the fear that, and, and this insidious theory that, you know, there's this fiendish plot to replace white people with people of other races and other colors uh, and that this is a kind of white genocide, you know, that that was also behind it, but also that he claimed Christian identity and to a certain extent Christian motivations for what he was doing. And all of that is, of course, deeply disturbing. And my heart breaks and my heart goes out to the people of Buffalo and indeed people of color all over the place who feel uh, this strong target being placed on their back, this, this victimization uh, that they do fear, that they do feel on a constant basis that I can't even under, understand, I can't even imagine, but how horrible, how deeply horrible. But I also want to reflect on this idea that this man claimed Christian identity and Christian motivation for what he was doing. And I know that our immediate reaction is to say, hold on, wait, that's not Christian. You know, no true Christian would do something like that. And to a certain extent, yes, of course that's true. Of course that is true. This, what, this kind of thinking and this kind of reaction is absolutely contrary to what we know of Jesus and what the Gospels tell us about what he stood for and what he preached. Of course, this is contrary. And yet, when somebody tells you a Christian, when somebody tells you that they are a Christian and they're doing something because they are a Christian, you have to listen to them. <laughs> and you can't just dismiss them and say, you know, this is just, just not what Christianity is. Somehow this person learned, was taught, was formed to feel that this was a legitimate expression of Christianity. And sadly, this is a way of thinking and a way of teaching that is real and that is indeed propagated, sometimes propagated in code, of course, but propagated even in some churches. How do you react to that? How do you react to that? My mind turns to Matthew 7, 15 to 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes, grapes gathered from thorns or figs or thistles? In the same way, every good tra tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. Uh, Jesus actually tells us this. There will be people who come along who will pervert Christianity, who will take it in into very disturbing ways, and those ways include um, hatred and, and violence and racism and all kinds of terrible things. Uh, we cannot simply dismiss them. We cannot just write them off and say, well, that's not Christianity or that's just, you know, uh, insanity or whatever, that's a mental health issue. No, uh, this is an idea that has become associated with Christianity. We cannot, we cannot ignore it. Uh, and Jesus is suggesting here, yeah, you need to judge it and judge it by its fruits. Is this producing a better society? Is this producing a peaceful society? Um, we need to look also at our own actions and, and ask, are we building a a good fruit society, or are we uh, deepening the divisions and the hatred? Oh, we all need to ask ourselves that. So Jesus' warning is real, and we need to take it seriously. Not dismiss, not write off someone as, as not counting them as Christian because that's 
you know, what's convenient for us. That's no way to deal with this. And, uh, oh, I pray for the healing of the church, the church universal. Gracious God, it's so horrible to think of what some people think Christianity is supposed to be. And it is so horrible to think of how they live that out. Help us to do our do better, to judge certain teachings by the fruits that they produce. And that is a hard task. But I pray that you would guide us in that task. Amen.